Welcome to Easy Elimo Learning Simplified. My name is Eric. I'll be taking you through this topic, rates, ratios, proportions, and percentages. And for this lesson, we are going to take you through something called direct proportions. So we have a few questions to help us illustrate what direct proportions are all about. Then we have uh, some few questions at the end of the lesson in the form of assignment just to help you practice on what you're going to learn through this, this lesson. So what does it mean when you talk about direct proportion? So direct uh, uh, or two quantities are said to be in direct proportion if uh, one is increasing in a particular ratio, then the other one also increases in the same ratio. And the same applies to when there is a decrease. So one could be decreasing in a particular ratio. So the other one also decreases in the same ratio, you see. That is when there are two, the two can be said to be in direct proportion. So for example, we have number of cups and costs. So number of cups increases from one to five. So you expect the cost to also increase. So if the cost is increasing in the same ratio, then you know that they are in direct proportion, you know? For example, let's look at the, the increase in ratio, or the increase ratio for number of cups. So remember when you're talking about increasing ratio, you say it's supposed to be given by the new value, which is five in this case, to the old value, which was one. Remember this is an increase from one to five. Now let's look at the corresponding increases in cost. So cost is increasing from 20 to 100, see? So let's see what is the ratio of increase here. So the ratio of increase, remember we say it's supposed to be given by the new value, which is 100, to the old value, which was 20. You see, both 120 are divisible by 20. So 20 goes into 100, how many times? Uh, five times, and 20 goes into 20 once. So you see, these two ratios are the same, see? So number of cups is increasing in the ratio of five is to one, and the cost is also increasing in the ratio of five is to one. And such, such uh, proportionality is what we're calling direct proportionality or direct proportion. Let's see how this is applicable in uh, solving problems in math. So we have uh, a car that is traveling at 40 kilometers. I mean, uh, a car is traveling for 40 kilometers on uh, five liters of petrol. How far does it need to travel 12 uh, on a, a fuel of 12 liters, you see? So... If you increase the distance, you expect the consumption here, the number of liters here to increase. So let's just draw a table that looks like the one we drew previously. So here I'll be talking about kilometers, and here I'll be talking about liters. So we have distance increasing from 40 here to some value that I do not know. Let me call it x. Now consumption is also increasing from 5 to now, this is taken to be a, a direct proportionality. Therefore, we expect the ratio of increase here to be the same. So, let's look at the ratio of increase in the number of kilometers. That is going to be the new value, which is x, to the old value, which is uh, 40. This should be equal to the increase ratio for consumption, which is 12, new value to 5. So the two are equal. Now, this is what we said in the when you're talking about proportion. Say this can be interpreted to mean x, which is the first value on this side, divided by 12, should be equal to 40 divided by, by 5. And therefore, you can cross multiply. You see, in maths, this if you want to solve for the unknown here, you simply multiply this diagonal here. You then you equate to the, the product of the other diagonal, you see. So this is going to be 5x is equal to 12 by 40. So divide both sides by 5, by 5. And so x is going to be, so 5 here, 1, 5 there, 8, and 8 by 12 is 60. So x, so number of kilometers will increase from 40 to 60 kilometers. Something of that sort. Now, 
Let me look at the second example here. There is a train that takes three hours to cover a distance of 20 kilometers while traveling between two stations at an average speed of 40 kilometers per hour. At what speed would it need to travel to cover a distance of 50 kilometers in the three hours? So again, we have speed now changing proportionately. So speed, this is now <coughs> kilometers per hour. And then distance, so kilometers. So speed here, it's changing from 40. It is a change of speed from 40 kilometers per hour to some value that we do not know. So let me call it M, you see. And then number of kilometers covered again is changing from 20 to some value that is given us 50. So we look at the two ratios. The ratios, first of all, we start with speed. So ratio will be M2. Remember, it's new value divided. I mean, the ratio of new value to the old value 40. This should be equal to the ratio of new value 50 here, 2 to 20. Okay, so let's see how that is done. So we have now M. The first one here you divide by the first one on the other side, which is 50 should be equal to 40 divided by the other one. On the other side, the, the second one is 20. So again, you simply cross multiply this. So you have 20M should be equal to 50 by 50 by 40. So if you divide both sides by 20, then you see 20 goes here, 120 goes there. Uh, two times. See, this has cancelled that. That means then M, which is the new, new speed at which it should be traveling to cover this distance here, should be equal to 50 by 2, and that is 100 kilometers per hour. That means this vehicle here has to travel at 100 kilometers per hour to be able to cover a distance of 50 kilometers within the same time interval. Three hours, three hours. You see, it traveled at uh, 40 kilometers per hour, it covered 20. Now, at what speed does it have to travel to cover a distance of 50? So we are using proportionality here to help us arrive at the speed, which is 100 kilometers Per hour. So it has to travel at 100 kilometers per hour for it to be able to cover a distance of 50 kilometers within the time interval of three hours. Now we have a train. A train travels this in five hours. How much time will it take to cover 60, uh, 600 kilometers? So you see this again direct because when you increase the distance, you expect the number of hours to increase. If this this train is traveling at, we are assuming all other factors are remaining constant. So the train is still traveling at the same speed. So again, I'll draw a table that looks like the one we drew. So we have now distance in kilometers, and then we have time in hours. So distance increases from 200 to uh, 600 kilometers. Time is also increasing. 200 will be corresponding to 5 to some other value that I do not know. Let's look at the ratios again. So let me do it here now. So I have the ratio of uh, kilometers increase ratio should be 200 to, no, not 200, but remember increase ratio, we take the last value, uh, the new value here, which is 600 to the old value, which is 200. This should be equal to, again, increase ratio for the number of hours is X, which is the new value to the old value, which was 5. So maybe you can simplify this first ratio here. You see this first ratio here is simplifiable. So this will be actually, uh, both of these are divisible by 200. So this is three is to one. See, see, 200 goes into, or you cancel the zero. So two goes into six, three times. Two goes into two ones. So this should be equal to X is to five. So again, this can be interpreted to mean three in maths. Three divided by X on the other side should be equal to one divided by 5. And then now you cross multiply. So if you cross multiply this, uh, 1 by x is x and 3 by 3 by 5 is 15. So this train will take 15 hours to cover a distance of a distance of, of 600 
kilometers. Distance of 600 kilometers, so 15 hours. See, the time also increases proportionately. Now let's look at this. This is a map. So again, I'll, uh, I'll draw a table like this one here. So this is map centimeters and then actual measurements you know two cities so actual distance so this is actual distance so this actual distance remember when you say the ratio of one to what this is what is this so one to to 20 million uh, this means one centimeter on the map represents 20 million centimeters on the actual measurement so this number of centimeters we can decide to convert them so the 20 million centimeters we can convert them to maybe kilometers so let me divide by 100 to change them to meters and then the meters you divide by 1000 so 100 if you divide by 100,000 here I'll be changing from centimeters to, to kilometers. So the three zeros cancels those two cancels. So this is 200 kilometers, you see. So this is one to, to 200 kilometers. So one corresponds to 200 kilometers. So we're talking about distance in kilometers here. So you want to see, these are kilometers, you see. Now, distance on the map increases from one to to four find the actual distance between them so what about four centimeters you see what it will correspond to so it's saying on the map one to four this one here will increase from 200 to what the ratio is the same so you say the increase ratio for distances on the map is four is to one remember new value to the old value this should be equal to the increase ratio for the distances on the actual measurements, which is uh, new value x to, to 200 kilometers. You see, kilometers, kilometers. So again, this in math is interpreted to mean four over x should be equal to one over 200. The first one divided by the first one, second one divided by the second one. Again, you cross multiply this. This is going to be 1 by x is x, and 4 by 200 is 800 kilometers. This is the actual uh, distance the, the, between the two cities. Two cities are 4 centimeters apart on the map. Find the actual distance, 800 kilometers. So this distance, could, this distance, actual distance here could still be given in terms of meters, you know. Uh, Otherwise, we have a few questions here to help you practice on the same thing that you have learned through the lesson. You can always attempt just to see how you are uh, able to maybe apply what you have learned through this lesson. When done, you can always post the response in the comment section. We'll be able to look at them and give feedback in the due course. Uh, otherwise, that marks the end. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you.